The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I'd like um, to acquire some information regarding those three days in the cave, or at least some information what happened. So were they just sitting there waiting? Um, How it, would they know to leave? Why did they leave on the third day, not on the first day? Yes. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد واله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلى الله عليه وسلم واللعنه الابديه على اعدائهم اجمعين او اوف كورس ذس از اول انستراكشنز فروم الله سبحانه وتعالى اوف كورس ام ات ذا 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 موست سيجنيفيكنت ثينج ذات هابند واز ذات ان ايه واز ريفيلد اباوت ذير ستي ان ذا كيف يس ام اند ذا ايه ستيتس ذات ام ذات وين الله سبحانه وتعالى ذا كفار ذا ديسبيليفرز هاف Uh, forced him to leave, forced him, that's the Prophet because uh, Abu Bakr wasn't forced to leave. Um, if I may, I can sort of read the verses. Please. From, uh, um, yes, the, the ayah that was revealed depicting, if you like, what happened in the, in the cave mm. and the states of, of the people, the two people. Yes. Is illa tansuruhu faqad nasaruhu Allah. You you didn't give him support, but Allah gave him the Prophet. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaking to Quraysh. You did not give him support. No, so to yes, in that thing to Quraysh. If you like, we go back to earlier part of the of the verse. But I'm not in order to save time. I'm not reading the earlier part of the of the that you didn't support him. Him me being the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Faqad nasaruhu Allah. Allah supported him, Allah gave him uh, victory. Um, إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا That uh, those who disbelieved forced the Prophet out of Mecca, if you like. Mm. Um, so, as I said, again, it, the, 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 the pronoun is about the Prophet ﷺ um, uh, because Abu Bakr wasn't forced. ثَانِيَ إِثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ So these two, they were in, in the cave while they were in the ghar it, he tells his companion do not grieve because he was very scared hmm. this uh, companion this Abu yeah. Bakr he was very scared uh, and um, he was grieving and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says uh, do not grieve um, Inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. Hmm. Now here comes the crunch. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ Okay. Now a question, the question, Allah, a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hmm. revealed or descended his sakina upon him. Him being the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because the, the, all along Allah is talking about إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ Don't you support him, which is the Prophet. فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ Allah gave him the uh, victory, which is the Prophet. إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا ثَانِي إِثْنِي While the, the disbelievers forced him out. Forced him being, being the Prophet فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah descended his sakina upon him. And the point is, he didn't this, then the, doesn't say فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِمَا On both of them. Um, Allah only descended the sakina on the Prophet and not the not Abu Bakr, uh, and whereas in other verses of the Quran, it states that Allah wanzal Allahu sakinatahu ala rasulihi wa ala al mu'minin. Allah descends descends his sakina, his tranquility, upon his messenger and upon the mu'minin. 
but in, not in here. The, okay. Um, what now, does that mean? Yeah, I just wanted to um, re recollect the information. Um, the thing is, we, we are aware that uh, the Sunni school of thought used this ayahs and this incident to collect virtues for yeah. this personality, Abu Bakr. Now, from what we're discussing right now, we see that certain things indicate to a different direction. For example, why would he be sad in the first place? Why would he be? Why would, for example, Abu Bakr, while in the cave with the Holy Prophet وسلم, be in a, in a form of distress and sadness and mm. sorrow? Mm. Okay? Mm. Because, let, let's be frank about it. Yeah? My logic dictates that if you're putting someone to be amongst the best of the best, because let's, let's be frank, Abu Bakr is placed second after the Holy Prophet. Some, some, some scholars even go as far as say that they're equal. Billah, that they're equal. Okay? So if we put him second man after the Holy Prophet, wouldn't you expect something more than someone special like the second man? So if you're the second best, that means your reactions, you would anticipate from these personalities to have a certain eloquence and certain attitude. I have seen nowhere or heard of nothing regarding Amir al-Mu'minin acting or being mentioned in such a way. This should make me think that there is a difference. Now why would he be sad? And him being sad, I question myself and I want you to clarify for me. It mentions the ayah that the Holy Prophet tells, uh, instructs um, Abu Bakr not to be sad. Now, if being sad would be some sort of a virtue that uh, it was good for that, uh, that specific, specific time to be sad, the Holy Prophet would not tell him, do not be sad. But instructing him not to be, that indicates that there is a vice there, that there, there is, there is a, a mistake, there is a problem. And again, later the ayah mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, sends his... Um, tranquility if you might say upon the holy prophet does not mention both and then you mention in other ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he sends his tranquility on the holy prophet and the mu'mineen which he doesn't mention here which indicates something that the whole Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us something even after the years whatever hadith come from either side Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us something here now what is he trying to tell us that, that, that's, this is very crucial because we're coming into a point in history of the Holy Prophet which we can indicate certain things which will affect the future later on. Why would the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this? It's very important. That means there's something that needs to be exposed here, which is crucial. Now, what is, is being intended, we have to say it straight as it is. It is being exposed that Abu Bakr, may not have been the person we think or is it, we are being taught that he is. Now, we, we want to be objective. And I want you to uh, point out, according to your research, I am aware I've heard from Sunni scholars that a lot of virtues are taken that also, for example, in Daya, he is mentioned as Sahibuhu. Uh, yeah? Now, what, what we understand from the word Sahib, is a companion and obviously a lot from uh, uh, Ahlul Sunnah Sahib may go beyond companion, best friend, uh, family, uh, like an unbreakable bond but here there is a contradiction because uh, you would expect <coughs> something more so why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning Sahib? I want to understand is this word Sahib pointing a virtue towards Abu Bakr? Does it mean it's saying that Allah is recognizing uh, Abu Bakr as a friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or does Sahib have a, another meaning to it that is is, is common? Um, I did hear about this topic. I did hear about another scholar, Shia scholar, 
the, there are mentions in the Holy Quran regarding this word sahib that it does not necessarily mean friend or it does not indicate that it's referring to a mu'min. Uh, for example, it mentioned about Nabi uh, Yusuf السلام, when he was in the prison. There's this ayah in the Holy Quran that he was in the prison with mushriks, non-believers, and he would uh, talk to them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Yusuf was speaking to the, uh, sah the Ashab. Mm. This indicates that Ashab would not necessarily be an attribute, meaning that whoever is mentioned as Ashab is the best friend. Correct? Yeah, yes, right. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> from here, the, we put big question marks that anyone who's listening can take it and investigate further, inshallah. Okay, so here, is there anything else you would like to tell me? Anything else you would like to expose or contribute regarding the incident of the cave? Um. As you mentioned, as you rightly mentioned, that uh, Sahib uh, doesn't uh, signify anything other than the fact that he was a companion. He was uh, accompanying him. Mm. Um, and you mentioned in the case of uh, uh, Prophet Yusuf, Allah uh, Nabiyyina wa that um, the, the uh, Ashab that he had uh, in prison with him and he was uh, talking uh, to them and when they asked him about the dreams that they had, and he, resp uh, he responded to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ref refers to them as uh, Sahib of uh, uh, Prophet uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. And whereas Prophet Yusuf, if you like, was Muslim, and, uh, uh, and those Ashab were Kuffar. They still, at that, at that time, uh, they weren't uh, Muslims, mm. and um, still they were referred, were referred to as Sahib. And of course, we have another ayah in the Quran in Surah Al Kahf. Um, uh, uh, so he said to his companion while he was talking, and of course, this companion was a kafir and the speaker was a Muslim. Um, the speaker believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, the addressee was a kafir, the, the one who was being called Sahib in the Quran. Uh, is uh, someone who is a kafir, non-believer. Um, so yes, sahib doesn't mean anything other than a, a companion, someone who is accompanying someone else. Nothing more than that. Okay. Uh, he could be of a completely different religion, he could be of no religion, he could be no. good or bad person, you know, it doesn't mean anything other than, uh, doesn't signify anything other than the fact that he is accompanying mm -hmm. another person. So uh, that doesn't mean um, anything, that doesn't signify anything. It doesn't carry any weight. Mm -hmm. And of course, they try to. People say that uh, you were his, his his companion in the cave and so on, but that doesn't mean anything. That really exactly uh, uh, doesn't mean anything. And as you mentioned, that uh, this ayah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is trying to expose him, that Allah descends the sakina upon. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and doesn't descend it upon uh, his the companion okay. who is said to be Abu Bakr. Through our and journey, whereas, whereas in other verses, in other verses, Allah subhanahu wa taala anzal Allah sakinatahu alayhi ala rasulihi wa ala al mu'minin. Um, some say, oh, it um, of course this is completely wrong and it doesn't go along with the with the verse with the uh, uh, Quranic verse. They say this was revealed. Um, upon uh, 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 not the Prophet but upon Abu Bakr uh, and because the Prophet doesn't need didn't need the Sakina at that time hmm. uh, whereas uh, we say as I said later on later on we have this ayah revealed وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِنَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ so um, uh, it's a contradiction. Yes, it's a contradiction. And then, if you if you read the other, uh, the rest of the um, ayah, وَأَيَّدَهُ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا Allah endorsed and supported the Prophet yeah. وآله, with soldiers that you don't see, malaika that is, um, angels, with soldiers that you don't see. So are they claiming, if the Sakina was descended on, the, on Abu Bakr, that he was supported by uh, soldiers or troops 
uh, uh, that were invisible. Yeah. Of course, no one claims such a thing. So yes, this um, claim that it was revealed on Abu Bakr really doesn't stand any chance. And um, the only thing that says Allah, that Sakina was, as you can see from Siyaq al-Ayah, uh, it was revealed on the, um, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi. And the fact that it wasn't revealed on Abu Bakr, it means that uh, he doesn't have the Iman so that he qualifies for Sakina to descend upon him. Because we have in, a, in the Quran in another place um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends the Sakina عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ الَّذِينِ بَيَعُونَكَ فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ When Allah, it was clear what is in the hearts in terms of Iman and in the heart of the Mu'mineen فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ لِيَزْدَادُ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا so that it, uh, this sakina enhances and increases the iman which they already have in their hearts, increases the iman. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that in here it doesn't descend on yeah. Abu Bakr, the fact that it shows that he didn't have iman so that he qualifies for receiving the sakina. Like all other Now again, this is, this is uh, for some people can be shocking. But obviously at the end of the day, w w we need to all... Uh, listen to these arguments with a clear mind well li listen and, to this uh, and we have investigate to as well yeah, it we takes a lot of independent uh, research and investigation and, and questioning yes. and also with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing which is aql yeah it sh sh should be done with unbiased um, exactly uh, uh, state of mind and basically this is uh, the um, the quran which is saying this and um, uh, and of course there are many um, other verses which uh, reveal a lot of uh, um, issues which people are, uh, if you like, unaware of because mm. uh, it it hasn't been explained and the tafsir that the, the, the ex yeah as you said it has not been explained correctly yeah. because that's the problem we have these it, days anyone very, takes an ayah out yeah. of context as well and. Mm you know, uh, makes uh, his own tafsir, he can give his own uh, it doesn't explanation. Even tafsir. For example, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, when it says, while you're delivering, while you're praying or delivering uh, Salat Al-Jum'ah, when they saw, you know, a uh, caravan of trade and so on arrive, they leave the pro abandon the Prophet <laughs> for Salat Al-Jum'ah. They abandon the Prophet and they go after the business and the trades that they wanted to pursue. Uh, this is what time when they were all, if you like, um, Muslims, believers and so on. They are, pray they are praying yeah. behind the Prophet, but they abandoned him. This is in the Quran. So there are many issues like this which uh, are uh, which should be taken w uh, yeah. carefully, should be thought about carefully and so sort of be noticed. Unfortunately, they haven't been clarify them so as to the extent that people don't notice them. They read them, but they don't recognize what's happening. It, it indicates that the, the mu'mineen or the Muslim or whatever, at that time, at the time of the Prophet, while the Prophet was saying the prayers, they abandoned him. Tarakuka <laughs> qa'ima. They abandoned him and went after uh, the, their trades. What happened according to some narrations that uh, <coughs> the first one who came forward um, to, to hit the Prophet, thinking that he was a Prophet, was Khalid ibn Walid. And Amir al grabbed him by his arm and twisted his arm and firmly holding or rasping his hand so that he can make uh, his sword, uh, he, he make him to uh, let go of his sword. And, and he took his sword and he threatened him. So that really uh, demoralized the warriors of Quraysh had that. Had that.